of Climb Melbourne. I'm one of the instructors here and my name is Clement. Today we're going to talk about climbing and descending turn. The theory behind it is very similar to a medium level turn. However, is there anything in particular that we have to look out for during a climbing and descending turn? First of all, during a climbing turn, the angle of bank is limited to not more than 15 degrees angle of bank. Whereas during a descending turn, the angle of bank can go up to 30 degrees. But why is the angle of bank limited to 15 degrees during a climbing turn? This is because during a climbing turn, the aircraft will slow down to a slower speed. And when the aircraft is banked, stall speed will be increased. What that means is the safety margin will be reduced significantly during a high angle of bank turn. Therefore, the angle of bank during a climbing turn is limited to not more than 15 degrees. On the other hand, during a climbing turn, the aircraft will be affected by the overbanking tendency. What it means by that is the aircraft will continue to bank towards the direction of the turn, increasing the angle of bank. But how does this tendency happen? And there are two main reasons behind this. First of all, let's imagine we are banking to the left. So the aircraft will be turning to the left. The right wing will be travelling at a faster speed than the left wing because under the same amount of time, the outer wing travels a greater distance. Therefore, the right wing will be producing more lift than the left wing. When there is uneven lift reduction between the two wings during a climbing turn, the aircraft will overbank. Secondly, the right wing travels a greater distance than the left wing. The right wing will have a greater angle of attack, and because of that, the right wing will create more lift. In summary, when considering both of the factors together, the outer wing creates more lift than the inner wing, hence the overbanking tendency. In order to overcome this tendency to maintain 15 degrees angle of bank during a climbing turn, we have to apply a bit of opposite aileron so the aircraft will maintain its angle of bank. After covering the theory behind climbing and descending turn, it's now time for the work cycles. First of all, let's start with the pre-entry work cycle. H, A, L. H, heading. Set heading bug for the heading that we want to turn to. A, altitude. Set altitude bug for the nominated altitude. L, lookout. Clearing the airspace in front of us before the start of the maneuver. If we're just doing a medium level turn, we just have to clear the airspace horizontally. For example, if we're making a right medium level turn, we have to clear left, center, center, right. If we're turning left, then clear right, center, center, left. However, if we're doing a climbing turn, not only will we have to clear the airspace horizontally, but also the airspace above us. Same applies to descending turn. We have to clear the airspace in front of us and below us before the start of the maneuver. After ensuring the airspace in the vicinity is clear of other traffic, we can now move on to the entry cycle. If we're conducting a climbing turn, it is P A S T. P power. Apply full throttle for climbing. A attitude. It depends on the types of climb that we're doing, but for demonstration purposes, we'll be demonstrating the cruise climb. Raise the nose until the horizon is on the dashboard. S speed. When conducting a cruise climb, speed should be about 90 knots. T trim. Trim until hands off state. After completing the entry cycle for a climbing turn, we'll now talk about the entry cycle for a descending turn. P A S T. P power. Reduce the medical pressure to 18 inches of medical pressure. A attitude. Five fingers. S speed. Approximately 110 120 knots. T trim. To initiate the descent, we have to push the stick forward. If we have been pushing the stick forward, then we have to trim forward until it hands off state. After the entry cycle for climbing or descending, we can now start to think about the entry cycle for turning. It is B, B, B. Bank, balance, back, pressure. Bank. Using aileron to turn the aircraft, one thing to note is during a climbing turn, the angle of bank should not exceed 15 degrees. Whereas in a descending turn, the bank angle can go up to a maximum of 30 degrees. Balance. Use rudder to balance the aircraft. Back pressure. Use the elevator to maintain the attitude of the aircraft. After established in a climbing turn or descending turn, we can now move on to the next work cycle, the maintenance work cycle. It is 
A L A P. A attitude. Maintain attitude of the aircraft. L lookout. Keep looking out into the direction of the turn. A attitude. Keep maintaining the attitude of the aircraft. P performance. During a climbing turn or descending turn, we'll be doing performance scan. In the performance scan, we'll be looking at our heading to see when to stop turning. We also have to keep an eye on the altimeter to see when to start to level off. This depends on whether we get to the heading or the altitude first. If it looks like the aircraft will get to the nominator heading first, we'll be doing the exit cycle for turning. B, B, B. Bank, balance, back pressure. We'll be doing this to stop turning, but keep on climbing or descending to the nominated altitude. If we now have arrived to our nominated altitude, we can start to level off and stop our climb or descent. The exit cycle for climb is ASPT. A attitude. Maintain four fingers normal cruise attitude. To do that, we have to push the control stick to lower the nose. Speed. Wait for speed to accelerate past about 100 knots. P. Power. Reduce power to normal cruise power setting, 22 inches of manual pressure and 2200 RPM. T. Trim. Since we're pushing forward, apply forward trim until hands off state. The exit cycle for the descending tone. P. A. S. T. P. Power. Increase power to normal cruise power setting, 22 inches of medical pressure and 2200 RPM. A. Attitude. For normal cruise, it will be four fingers attitude. S. Speed. Speed should be about 110 to 120 knots. T. Trim. Trim until hands off state. And they are the work cycle for climbing and descending turn. Now, let's have a look into how do we actually conduct them in an aircraft. When conducting a climbing turn, the pre-entry cycle is HAL, H heading. When turning to the left, to the heading of 045, set the heading back to 045. Altitude, we are currently maintaining 3,500 feet. Let's say we're climbing 1,000 feet to 4,500 feet. Set altitude back to 4,500 feet. Look okay, out, because we'll be climbing first, so right, center, center, left, and up. No traffic, so we can start the entry cycle. P-A-S-T, first P power, full power. Pitch, full fine. And throttle. A attitude, for cruise climbing turn, initially cruise climb dash on horizon. At the same time, apply enough right rudder and trim. When established in a cruise climb, we can start the entry cycle BBB, but we'll first look out right, center, center, left, bank, balance, back pressure to maintain the horizon on the same position, the same attitude. Maximum angle of bank is 15 degrees, as you can see. During the turn, we'll be doing attitude, look out into the turn, attitude, performance, and monitor the altimeter, airspeed indicator, and the heading to see how much we have to turn. When there is roughly 10 degrees to the end of the turn, we can start to apply opposite bank, opposite balance, and opposite back pressure to maintain a normal cruise climb. When there is roughly 50 feet to climb to, then we can start to apply ASPT, attitude 4 fingers, speed approximately 90 to 100 knots, power 22 inches of metal pressure, 2200 RPM. And trim, because we've been pushing forward, so trim forward until attitude is maintained at four fingers, and that is a climbing turn. For descending turn, pre-entry is H-A-L, H-heading. Let's say we have to make a right turn to the heading of 210, so set the heading buck to 210. A, altitude. If we're descending to 4,500 feet, so set 4,005 on the altimeter bug. L, look out, left, center, center, right, and in front is uh, clear of traffic, then we can start descending. 
let's say we're doing a cruise descent, 18 inches of medical pressure and 5 fingers of attitude, push the stick forward for 5 fingers. Speed is roughly 110 to 120 knots. Trim. The performance that we're looking for is about for minus 500 feet per minute of descent. When we start turning, we'll be doing BBB bank balance back pressure. Right before we turn, we'll look out again, so left, center, center, right. Then we'll start the turn with bank with ailerons. Just a bit of right rudder to balance and back pressure. You can see I've started to pull back a little bit to maintain 500 feet. Charlie's ready three five left. Otherwise, the plane will be descending too quickly. Attitude, looking out into the turn. Attitude, performance. Checking the engine parameters are in the green. When we're about to reach heading 210, we can start to apply opposite bank, opposite balance, and opposite back pressure to keep maintaining five fingers attitude to resume cruise descent. During the descent, due to the increase of atmospheric pressure, the manifold pressure will be increased, so we have to reduce manifold pressure back to 18 inches. When we're about 50 feet above, then we can start the exit cycle PST, power, attitude, four fingers, speed and trim. Maintain 4,500 feet, and that is how we do a descending turn. It is the time for threat and error management. One of the significant threats that could be imposed on us during a climbing turn is the overbanking tendency of the aircraft. It could also be a potential error from the pilot. This tendency may cause the aircraft to roll more than 15 degrees angle of bank and increase the stall speed exponentially, potentially stalling the aircraft. The management of this threat and error is to be aware of the overbanking tendency and also to monitor the aircraft's attitude and instruments. At the same time, apply a little bit of opposite aileron to make sure the aircraft is below 15 degrees angle of bank. Secondly, the visibility from the cockpit will be reduced during a climbing or descending turn. And that is why it is essential to conduct a detailed lookout before the start of the maneuver, clearing the surrounding airspace before changing in direction. And that is it for today guys. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great content and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.